This is the Matter Hacker's Pulse. The Pulse is a Cartesian i3 style 3D printer from Matter Hackers, a US based company in California. The Pulse series of 3D printer are fully customizable, and this is the base model, coming in right at $800 US, fully assembled, supported, and shipped. With this model, you get a CME CNC EZR extruder with a Bowden tube setup, a genuine E3D V6 light hot end, a Prusa Mark 42 style heated bed with a build tack sheet on top, an Ulta Machine Mini Rambo mainboard, of course part cooling and automated bed leveling via a BL touch, and a 15 amp power brick. On the website you can see we have the base model like I have, we have the Pulse XE which is designed for abrasive materials, as well as the Pulse HV which is for high output printing. You can get enclosure kits, and even with the base model there's a whole list of customizable add-ons. Now I did have issues with my Pulse right out of the box, but all of those issues were related to shipping damage, and Matter Hackers has corrected all of them. They even went so far to ship the printer back so that they could test some wires and some connectors to make sure everything checked out okay. Now this review is an interesting one, and there are definitely some things that I would have done differently on the Pulse if I was building it, but if you start looking at the whole printer as an ecosystem, then you start to realize where Matter Hackers was going. They've created a suite of tools to go along with the Pulse to make things easier to use. The biggest one being Matter Control. So the newest version of Matter Control is designed to be a one-stop shop. You can slice, you can print, you can even draw like a Tinkercad type environment if you'd like to. When you order a Pulse, download Matter Control and log in with your Matter Hacker's user ID and password, it automatically has the printer that you bought in the environment. So you can just connect up. You get some of your printer stats up here, and you have your slicer settings, and your controls. All your bed calibration and leveling is set right in matter control, and it stores those values in the software. It also gives you some handy macros you can use to control your printer. And you can use matter control free of charge from matter hackers for anything you'd like to. And that brings me to the first thing that jumped out at me about the Pulse when I got it. It doesn't come with an LCD screen and an SD card reader. And that's because these printers are designed to print tethered, because there's a lot of features that Matter Controls offers that can only work if it's tethered to Matter Control. Auto bed leveling is one of them. You can get around it with a hack. I'll talk more about that later. And also print resume. So you're going along, print your benchy, no big deal. And then you have a complete power outage of printer and computer. And after the power comes back on and your computer and your printer are back up, you can go back into Matter Control. Go to hardware, select your printer and hit open, hit connect, and then it's going to give you a window to ask you if you'd like to attempt to recover that print. We'll go ahead and hit recover print. It's going to start heating up to try to recover that print. Now this isn't going to help you if the bed cools down and the print unsticks, but there isn't any power failure that is going to be able to help you with that. And when it's heated, it's going to go back to home in this top corner, and it started printing right where it left off. And if you do want to print outside of Matter Control, the Pulse does run Marlin and they offer a copy that you could edit and re-upload if you'd like. But the easiest way is just to do it in EEPROM. So if you display EEPROM with an M503, you'll notice the last line is an M851. That's your Z-Probe offset. So even though the bed leveling is done inside of Matter Control, you can still G28 to home, and then G29 to run a standard bilinear 9-point bed level. And after that level's complete, just move to the center of the bed, do a G1X125Y110, and then you can turn software end stops off with an M211S0. This will allow you to go into the negative. Then slide a piece of paper underneath and bring it down slowly until you touch the paper. Then when you're happy with how the paper feels, you can do an M114. This will show you where you are. We are currently at a negative 0.27 on the Z, so that'll be your offset. Then you can enter an M851, Z, negative 0.27. M500 to save to EEPROM. Then going forward, if you want to print from the terminal or octoprint, you will have a Z offset setting. You can just run your G28, then your G29, and you should be at the correct first layer. 
Although I do understand why they're doing this to help form end-to-end -end support for their ecosystem and offer other features, it can be a little bit off-putting when you're used to throwing your printer down and printing directly from your SD card or integrating with Octoprint. And to be 100% honest, using Matter Control to slice my files, software designed for this exact printer, I can't get as good a prints with Matter Control as I can with other slicers. This is a Benchy printed with Matter Control with the default settings that Matter Hacker gives you for the pulse. This is a Benchy printed with Slick 3R using all the settings that Matter Hacker gives you in Matter Control just transposed to the other slicer. Now let's take a look at the printer and I'll show you some of the things I like and some of the things I don't like. I do like the way the pulse is constructed. It has a nice aluminum frame. It's pretty much your standard riprap i3 design. It has threaded rods and smooth rods putting the whole thing together. It has integrated lead screws. Every motor does have a sound dampener on it, which is nice. It makes it really quiet to operate. It also has Y and X belt tensioners, which is a nice add-on. Again, the base model has the EZR extruder on it. It's nothing fancy, but it does its job pretty well. It does have a V6 light hot end, which I think they could have went ahead and kicked in the full V6 aluminum one instead of the steel one. That wouldn't have been that big of a deal but it still does work pretty well. I like the fact they use a genuine Ultima Machine Mini Rambo board. It's nothing fancy, but it does its job. It does home up here in the top left, but that's so you don't crash into anything if you're trying to recover a print. So that's a pretty nice idea to add in. The BL Touch is fine. I like the Mark 42 heated bed. Those are always nice. I am not a big fan of BuildTech. It sticks too well. I would have rather seen something like PEI on this, and the power adapter. It's a 15 amp brick, which is good for safety, but I don't really care for it. It has a proprietary plug, so I have to go find this brick. I can't just plug it in and start using it. But going to that brick did allow them to integrate a spool holder on the back, so you don't have to find a spool holder to be able to use this printer straight out of the box. And again, stock, it doesn't come with an LCD screen. They do have a 3D printed wire tray underneath. That's a pretty nice feature, as well as some pieces of rubber in between the bed and the bearing to help greatly reduce the noise when it's printing. Again, a very quiet machine, as well as some rubber feet on each one of the plastic parts to help reduce it even further. So given the specs of this machine, it has a nice main board and it has decent hardware, you'd pretty much figure that it prints pretty nice. And you wouldn't be wrong, it does. I printed a really nice oversized Moai. All the layers look almost flawless. This was printed in vase mode. You can barely see the layer lines. That came out really well. And I did this model to check out the stringing for the Bowden setup. And even with the Bowden, it did really well. This hasn't been cleaned up at all. The only other thing that really jumped out at me about this machine is the lack of some of the polish, like the burrs on the ends of these threaded rods. I understand why they're there, but that is something that got missed that shouldn't have. This could really cut somebody, and that's a concern. So we've seen the software. You can design, slice, and control your 3D printer all in one suite. We've seen the hardware. It can turn out a nice 3D print. And Matter Hacker sells filament, and they support the whole thing end to end. With that said, would I buy another Matter Hacker's Pulse? No. But that's mostly based on personal preference. If you need an ecosystem like the Pulse, where you can design all the way to having a printed part in hand and it's completely supported by Matter Hackers, then this might be the machine for you. Unfortunately, there's just a few things about the Pulse that are a deal breaker for me. I have not been in contact with Matter Hackers about this machine other than some support items. This was bought with my own funds and all opinions expressed are my own. I hope you liked this video or you found it helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.